Why does September 23rd Paige's what? What's going on in Paige's life? She's home um, most days. Sometimes she'd go out with her friends. Um, she had a boyfriend who was um, actually staying with us. Um, she had been putting in applications for work all around. We were living over in Florence. Um, and she was every day looking for work and got went to Gateway to get the paperwork to start to go to school. And um, just she would get her little girl, you know, and on the weekend and um, she was home most of the time other than, you know, spending time with Mackenzie or looking for a, a part-time job and getting ready to try to start back at school. So she wanted a future. Yeah. She wanted to be something besides just her, you know, Paige, who has Mackenzie. What did she want to be? Well, she wasn't decided. She was just, you know, looking around at different options. That's why she went to the school. She's like, ah, I'm going to, I don't know what I want to do. So she was going to just check into what she could do. And, but she was really just so spunky and fun and full of life. And everyone will tell you that knows her, like, if she was funny, like, she always would make you laugh. She would, you know, she always had these sayings, these, like, imper like her own little voices. She would change her voice and, and say things, and it would make you laugh. Like. And, uh, she could cheer anyone up if they were having a bad day. And she was really sweet, very, very sweet and loving. She has a big heart. Um, she's precious. That's the word to describe her. She's really, really precious. And if you, if you knew her, you'd love her. So as far as you know, what happened? As far as I know, she was going to see a friend named Jason in Covington that lives in the same apartment building as her sister Brittany. So she was going to go down and see Brittany and Jason. And when she came into my bedroom, I was feeding the baby. It was late. And she said, I thought she said, Jason's picking me up. And I know Jason, and he's always giving Brittany and Paige rides, so I was like, she said, I'm going down Brittany's, Jason's picking me up. Well, apparently she had said, Jake's picking me up, which is, I didn't know him. All I, when I seen the picture of him, I only, she said, that's some guy named Bump. So when she came into my room that night and said, J Jake's picking me up, I, you know, it's late, I'm up feeding the baby, I thought she said Jason, because she was going down to Jason's. And I said, okay. And then after that, I'd never seen her again. <laughs> um, Jacob picked her up and took her to his house and admitted to having alcohol with her. And then he claimed that he dropped her off at 15th and Scott. Um, Brittany and Jason lived in a building on Nancy Street, which would be like, you'd have to go a couple more blocks up from 15th and then a block over and then go this way and that way to get to Nancy. I don't understand why he didn't take her there all the way to the door at whatever hours in the morning it was. Why wouldn't he get her there safely to the door? Why would he let her off? I, f I mean, I went and found out where he lived and I asked him, what happened? Like, why did you, 
you're saying she got off at 15th and Scott, why would she get out there? And he said, I don't know. She just wanted out there uh, suddenly. And I said, but that doesn't make sense. Did she call someone to meet her there? Or, you know, it doesn't make sense if she was going to Brittany's, why she would have got out there. And he just, he really wouldn't look at me, you know. And he, and he kept rubbing his hair. And I said, well, could you check your phone? Because she didn't have minutes on her phone. And I said, to see who she called, because she had to have been meeting somebody if she would went out there instead of her sister's, because that was the plan for her to go to her sister's. And he said, my phone automatically deletes every 24 hours. And I thought that was very odd. And then he said, I have company, and I, I need to, I got to go. And he didn't really want to talk to me, but, you know, I just, I asked him, did, you know, she have plans with someone else? I mean, did her plans change? It doesn't make sense to me. But he didn't really have any explanations for me. <laughs> Other than he said, I don't know, she just wanted out, so I let her out. And no one's ever seen her since. <laughs> but actually, his cell phone records he indicate he was like 10 miles away from where he said he let her off at. He, the, he didn't ping anywhere near there. So I don't know what to, you know, what, I don't know what happened to her because all I know is she left with him and she never came back. And it's been almost a year and no one's heard anything from her, like, she hasn't been on Facebook or MySpace, or she hasn't contacted any of her friends. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. Our family is so torn apart. Like, my mom, she'll get up early for work and put flyers up or do it after work still you know she's still putting the flyers up I get out and help her too um, I know that the detective that was originally assigned the case is still trying to find her I know he's doing you know what he can and that he is dedicated to finding her and he told me he would look for her forever <laughs> but Nothing's coming up. <laughs> what do you think happened? I think something bad happened to her. I hope that it didn't, but it just, I'm her mom and I can feel it in my soul. My, you know, I just. She wouldn't run away, I know that for sure. She wouldn't stay away from her family. There's no way, she, she, we were close. She wouldn't stay away from her little girl for sure. You know, her little girl just had a birthday and Paige wouldn't have missed that for anything in the world. If she could have been there, she would have. <laughs> I don't. I want to know what happened to her. That's why I'm I'm asking anyone out there in the in the public. Somebody has to know something, and I just I'm begging them to please go to the police and tell what they know so that we can just bring her home. You know, however. That may be, but bring her home. And, you know, there's people out there who know where she is. If they could just have it in their hearts to tell us, or anonymously or whatever, tell the police so we can just find her. It won't mean so much to us, you know more than anything else in the world to know where she is. If I could just see her face 
and hold her in my arms one more time, I would take my last breath and lay down and die to do that. And I told Ben I want to see her. And, I, and even if she's not alive, just I would do, I just want to be able to know where she is and what happened to her. It's every night. I don't sleep, I mean, at all. I hardly sleep. My time is so bad because it's so quiet and I lay there and I think, God, where is my daughter at? You know, what happened to her? Where is she? How could this really be happening to us? It just don't seem like it could really be true. Like, I just want to wake up out of this nightmare and Paige be here. That's I just know somebody knows. I just wish they would tell us. And I wish they would tell us. Do you know someone knows or do you think someone knows? I know someone knows. And I don't know how they sleep at night. Because I don't know how they can sleep at night. No one and not telling us. Do you think Jake Bumpus has anything to do with her? Yeah. Because nothing adds up and he won't talk to the police. He's never talked to the detective on the case. He refused to talk to him. He's got a lawyer and, you know, he says he dropped her off, and that's all he has to say. To me, that just doesn't seem right. Like, he won't take a lie detector test, and he has no alibi either. He has no alibi for that night. He can't give an alibi, he can't give a lie detectors, and he's never talked to the lead detective. And he has a lawyer, and he, I guess, has got the right to remain silent. So that's what he's doing. How's Mackenzie? Well, she's getting bigger and she's growing and I'm scared she's going to forget her mom. But she comes here and looks at all the pictures of her mom and she'll say that it's my mommy and she'll say, where's my mommy? <laughs> She wants to know where her mom is. And it hurts me so bad I can hardly even, I just have to go in the other room in the bathroom and cry so that the kids don't see me. Because it breaks my heart to see that little girl and she looks like her mommy too. Every day must just be a new, brand new nightmare. Yeah, like Mackenzie's birthday was really hard. My birthday was the 22nd. Mackenzie's is the 24th. Okay, now you got a little tissue under your eye. Okay. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, so let's let's talk about Jake Bumpus. Do you think that Jacob Bumpus has anything to do with where your daughter is? <laughs> yeah, I do because. Why he doesn't talk to the detective, he's never talked to the detective, and he won't take a lie detector test. He doesn't have an alibi. He remains silent. If he was her friend, wouldn't he be talking and trying to help us find her? Would he let her out on a street corner in Covington at odd hours of the night instead of taking her all the way to where she was going. If he, she's just a real tiny little thing too. And I mean, wouldn't he want to make sure she got where she was going safely if he was, you know, if he cared about Paige? Wouldn't he, if he was her friend, wouldn't he be concerned with her safety? 
you know, it doesn't make sense that he would just let her out on a random street corner in the early hours of the morning because she's just a young girl and he had told us that he had been drinking with her. So if she had been drinking also on top of that, you know, it doesn't make sense just to drop someone off like that. Do you think he knows something or he did something? I don't know, at least one or the other. I think he definitely knows where Paige is and what happened to her. I don't know if he's the one who did it or not, but he knows because it doesn't add up that when I went to his house to ask him where, what happened, like, I didn't even know him. I had to find out through kids where he lived. And I went to his house and I'm like, can you please tell me what happened that night? He didn't really even want to look at me and he kept messing with his hair and he said that they had a couple beers and then she wanted to go to Brittany's, but while they were driving, she asked to get out at the corner of 15th and Scott. And I said, so you were taking her to Brittany's, but she asked to get out at the corner of 15th and Scott? And he said, yeah. And I said, why would she just want to get out there? Why wouldn't she want you to take her all the way? And he said he didn't know. I said, who did she call? I said, check your phone, because hers didn't have minutes. And he said, my phone deletes every 24 hours. And I said, but did she call somebody? And he said, no. And I said, if that doesn't make sense, she would be meeting someone to get out there. She doesn't know anyone at the corner of 15th and Scott. It doesn't, I told him it doesn't make sense. And he said, I don't know, she just wanted out. And then he said, I have company and I have a baby here, I really need to go. And then he just cut me short and shut the door. So I get the feeling from then that, you know, he was lying. And it only makes sense that he's lying because he doesn't have an alibi. He won't take a lie detector's test. He won't talk to the lead detective on the case who has never spoken to him. He won't. He refuses to talk to him. Um, he holds his right to remain silent. The only thing he's ever said is he let her off at 15th and Scott. And that's all that he'll say. And it doesn't make sense to me at all. <laughs> What would you say to Jacob Bumpus right now if you could? Please tell us where she is. That, I mean, I don't even... The cops can let him go free for all I care if he'll just tell us where she's at and what happened. It's like, we can't stand it. We don't. I don't want to live another day not knowing where she's at. Every day is like the worst like life is just so hard because I don't know I lay down at night I don't sleep I don't know where my child is and I don't know what happened to her I at least need to know what happened to her and where she's at so we can bring her home you know even if she's gone <laughs> She deserves better than that. She deserves so much more than that, all of this. She's so precious, and she's my baby. And, um. Thank you, Daisy. Tell me about Mackenzie. How's she doing? How's she dealing with all this? Well, Mackenzie just had her birthday, and she had it without her mother, of course, and it was really hard for me um, 
to see, you know, the, the party and everybody's there, but Paige isn't there. And she's the main person that should be there. She gave birth to that little girl. She should be at her party. She should be with her. <laughs> Mackenzie comes over and looks at the pictures of her mommy and her, and she'll say, that's my mommy. And, and I'll say, yeah, and she'll say, where's my mommy at? Or can we find my mommy? I don't even know what to say to her. <laughs> and it kills me. What do you fear the most about Mackenzie? I'm growing up without her mother. <laughs> and not even being able to tell her why or what happened. Just if someone could have a conscience and at least let us know where she is. <laughs> and, you know, answer our questions what happened to her where is she you know every day is just so painful for all of us my mom and her sister and her brother and her other little sister I know that her brother and sister and I are all in therapy and my five-year-old after Paige went missing, started having a lot of nightmares, bad nightmares about people getting her and different things and bad things happening to the baby and just um, when she goes to therapy, but you know, the therapist said that she doesn't want to hurt me. She keeps things from me because she doesn't want me to be sad. And um, her and Paige were so close, The little, my little five-year-old. She was really close with Brittany, too, her older sister. They were like this growing up. And, um, you know, Araya used to always sit on her lap at the computer. And Araya and her, they just, they're like two little peas in the pod. They're sisters, and they're, um, Araya's five, she's 17, so they're many years apart. But it's like a little or you know, Paige. Even before Paige went missing, I would always call Araya Paige. I'd be like, Paige, I mean, Araya, you know. So um, I know she said to me one time, which isn't really fair to her, but she said, don't cry, Mommy. I can be Paige for you. And I told her, no, baby, you're Araya. You be Araya but she doesn't want me to hurt, you know what I mean? And she knows she looks so much like her sister and is a lot like her sister. She said, I can just be Paige for you so you won't be sad. <laughs> she broke my heart. I didn't want her to go through that, you know? She needs to be her, who she is. And everything's just so messed up, you know? <sighs> Is there anything else you want to add? I don't want to make this belabor this any more for you. I know you're worried that Mackenzie's not going to remember her mom one day. I know yeah. you're worried about all those things. But is there anything else that you want to say that... I just want to say that whoever's out there that knows something, if they would just please, 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 please tell us. <laughs> I mean, they don't even have to get in trouble. We just want to know. Um, we just want to know where she is so we can bring her home. <laughs> I do want to ask you one other thing. When I was asking about her, tell me about her. I'm going to say this delicately, but I'm, there's no easy way to say this. You use the word was a lot. She was a nice girl. She was fun. Was there a moment when you started using was versus is? I don't even know. I just feel like something's happened to her because I'm her mom and I can just feel it. I don't, I can't explain it. I hope she's out there somewhere alive and that she comes home with this, all the circumstances around this case just don't seem to 
point to that. It doesn't make sense that the guy last with her gets a lawyer and won't take a lie detector, has no alibi, won't talk to the detective. I mean, what does that tell you? What would you think if you were me? Like, I mean, what, what does it make you think? It, it's, it's only obvious and there's nothing we can do about it. And there's only thing we can do is wait and hope and pray that he will just tell us where she is. And I don't know if he's going to do that. I'll just stay here with you for a minute. Okay. I know this is really hard. But, um, let's stay with me. So, one of the reasons that we're doing this is J.C. Dugard was found. Do you remember that story about the girl in California? She was gone for like 17 years. Yeah. And then she, her parents, or someone noticed her, and the police thought it was funny. So they're doing an interview with her. She was found. When, I don't know if you remember her at all. I've heard the story. Yeah, it was she was kidnapped out of mm -hmm. her home? I think. No, that was the one in Salt Lake. This how she was? I don't remember she her was out how she. Yeah, she was, and someone took her and. She has children with a couple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But when you hear that someone's found after 17 years, that's one of the reasons we were kind of talking about this was what would people who have been dealing with this for so long, how does that affect them, you know, when you hear that? It makes you stop and think maybe there could be a chance that, you know, somebody has Paige. But then I think how... If someone does have her, how do we find her? <laughs> and what are they, you know, what would they be doing to her? Are they hurting her or torturing her or what? Believe me, I've thought about that a lot. I don't sleep at night at all. A lot of things go through my mind. <laughs> I mean, Paige is such a fighter. It just... It seems like she would fight her hardest to get away from a situation like that. I know Paige. She she would fight so hard to get away from any kind of situation like that if she was in it. I know her so well.